Hey guys, bringing you another do-it-yourself computer repair video today. I have a Lenovo laptop here, and I'm gonna show you how to troubleshoot and fix a problem where your computer is turning on, uh, but the screen is staying black or very dim. So that it, it could be multiple causes for this issue. I'm gonna show you how to identify what's, what's causing it, and then obviously how to fix it. Uh, keep in mind, a lot of people confuse this issue with some other problems uh, that are separate fixes. So if your computer is not turning on at all, uh, sometimes people say that that my screen's black. Well, it, it's black because your computer's not turning on. So if your computer's not turning on, you don't hear the motherboard clicks, you don't hear your fan engaging. Um, if your computer's not turning on, that's below in the description. Uh, that's a computer won't turn on fix video. Uh, that also applies to if your computer's turning on but freezing right away or turning on but turning off right away before that initial logo screen. Uh, the second issue that people confuse it with is if your computer's turning on, it's reaching that initial logo screen, but then it's shutting off and restarting or, or then it, it goes black. Um, if, if that's your problem, look in the video below. That's a boot loop fix video uh, for both if your computer's in the boot loop and then if your screen's going black after that logo. This is just if your screen's not working but you think your computer is. Uh, that's what we're gonna show you how to fix today. So the first thing that I'm gonna take you in to look at this is a RAM fix. Most likely, this is most of the time due to a RAM problem. So now I'm gonna show you how to get into your computer and, and check your RAM. If you have any questions throughout this video, uh, please check the frequently asked questions below in the description. Um, if I see you asking the same questions over and over again, I try to add them there. And uh, if you don't see your question there, uh, feel free to leave it as a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Now if you're lucky enough on the bottom of your computer to have easy access doors or panels, take those off. There's a chance one of them will lead you to your RAM. I do not have that in this model to take my entire bottom panel off. So if you're in that situation, take all the screws out, you can see. Uh, make sure to check underneath your CD-ROM drive, sometimes there's screws there. Check underneath your battery, sometimes there's screws there. And check underneath your rubber feet, sometimes they hide screws there. But I'm gonna take off my panel and then I'll show you the, the RAM test that we're gonna do. So this is your RAM. Generally speaking, you will see it like this. Sometimes they'll be on top of each other, but most of the time they'll be flat side to side. Uh, these are your RAM sticks and they're held in by two spring-loaded arms on either side. Uh, you can remove them by pulling those arms apart and the RAM pops up. <laughs> Usually it doesn't pop up and out. Uh, it just pops up and then you slide it out like, like this. Uh, now what we're gonna do here is the first thing you wanna do Try reseating the RAM. What reseating is, is when you remove it and then plug it back in. Sometimes RAM, hard drives, sometimes various components can come loose uh, if you hit the computer or drop it. Uh, so try putting the arms apart, taking the RAM out, and then putting them back in, making sure they're secure, and then pushing them down, and they snap back in. Try doing that to both your RAM sticks. Try starting your computer again. Um, if you're lucky, that'll be the cause. If not, Let's test to see which one of these RAM sticks is bad. So what you would do then is you would remove one RAM stick and then you would try starting your computer again. Uh, if your computer starts, you know that this RAM stick is bad and this one's good. You would need to replace this. Uh, the cool thing with replacing computer components is you can always use the opportunity to upgrade as long as you're in here. And generally speaking, this is not expensive stuff. Um, if you need help, and how to find the right RAM for your computer, check the video link below in the description. Um, there's a lot of numbers here and not all RAM will work in all computers. So check out that link if you wanna learn which one of these numbers matter and, and how to buy the right RAM for your computer. If your, your computer does not turn on, or I'm sorry, if your screen does not turn on, put this RAM stick back and remove the other one. And then repeat that test, try starting your computer. Again, if it starts up and the screen works, you know that one's bad and that one's good. If after this RAM test, your screen's still not working, I mean, it is possible both RAM sticks are bad. It, it's unlikely, it's kinda like headlights in a car, they tend to not go at the same time. Um, if you wanna be super safe, um, I know in my computer shop, uh, I, I have working sticks of RAM that I will try in, in that case. If you wanna buy another stick of RAM that you're pretty sure is good, go for it. But again, most likely they're not gonna both be bad. If you run this test and your screen's not working, uh, most likely it's not your RAM, we're, we're gonna move on. 
So the thing we're going to move on to next is your CMOS battery, which is right here. It looks like a watch battery, a large watch battery inside this portal. Uh, I have a motherboard here with another display. Sometimes they're wrapped in black electrical tape and they're corded and wired and they plug into your motherboard via a port like that. So that's the two ways you may see a CMOS battery. Uh, oftentimes they'll be like this. Uh, so this battery is held in, there's a spring, there's a spring over here holding it in and a spring down here. So what you want to do is push the battery in a tad and then lift it up. Oops, I'm moving my computer. And it should just come up just like that. Be careful when you're doing that though. If you push too hard or you force it up, you could break this section of the port and then the CMOS battery won't be able to stay in like that. Uh, so try taking that out. Uh, if, if, if you want, just leave it out for a little while, put it back in, try it again. Uh, but it's a fairly cheap part. It's well under $1 US. Um, so try replacing this because there's really no way to test if it's good. So try replacing it um, as your next step in, in, in why your screen's not working. If all of this checks out and you tried your RAM test and you tried your uh, CMOS battery replacement and it's still not working, uh, we're going to move on to test your LCD and your LCD cable now. So I'll show you how to do that once I get my computer put back together. So now that I have my computer put back together, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to test for a bad LCD or a bad LCD cable. And I'm going to do that using an external monitor here. Now what you're going to want to do is hook your laptop up to the external monitor. In my laptop, I have an HDMI port. You may have this, you may have a VGA port, or you may have a, uh, a USB uh, connection that you can put a USB into your external monitor. But all I have in this computer is a HDMI port. Now looking at my external monitor, there's my HDMI port, there's a VGA port. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have a USB, so I, I would use the HDMI. So you would hook up the computer, to your external monitor uh, with one of those ports and one of those cables. If your computer is still not displaying on the screen, but it is displaying to the external monitor, you know that your motherboard's fine, you know that there's an issue with your LCD or your LCD cable. If that's your situation, try reseeding the LCD cable. There'll be a video link below in how to replace an LCD and an LCD cable for a Toshiba laptop, because that's pretty involved. Uh, if it makes you feel safer, Look up an exact video on your exact model computer and then I'll tell you exactly what you're looking at uh, getting into a, a, a repair like that and how to access those components. So again, if that's your situation, reseat your LCD cable, see if that fixes it. If that still doesn't fix it and it's still displaying here but not on your laptop, try replacing the LCD cable. It's a much cheaper part than, than an, an entire screen. If that doesn't fix it, at that point, I would re replace your LCD. And again, reference that video link in the description on how to replace an LCD. However, if your situation is different, if you plug it in and you can't get anything to display on, on the LCD, it's not necessarily your motherboard yet. Some computers do not like displaying to an external monitor if it thinks it still has its own. So what you would have to do to make double sure is go into your computer again, unplug the LCD cable from the motherboard, so that it has to display to the external and try it again. If you're unplugged and it's still not displaying to the external, at this point we've ruled out an LCD issue, at this point your motherboard is most likely bad, we're gonna swap that out. If you wanna be extra us certain, if, 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 if you're really on a do-it-yourself kick and you really wanna make sure, try swapping out your CPU first. It's very unlikely that's the issue. Off, much more likely a motherboard goes before the CPU goes. But if you want to make doubly sure, swap out your CPU. But at this point, we've ruled everything out. We've ruled out your RAM. We've ruled out your CMOS battery. We've ruled out your LCD and, and, and the cable. At this point, you're looking at a motherboard re replacement. So we've taken you through all the different steps. It could be all the different causes why your screen's not displaying. Uh, if that is your issue, you will be able to fix it with this video going through these various uh, things. If you got lost, if you need help, if you saw something that I didn't describe very well and you don't know what to do, check out the frequently asked questions below. If you don't see a question there, leave me a comment. I try to get back to you a couple times a day at least. 
Uh, like and share if this was helpful. And if you enjoyed do-it-yourself computer work, uh, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.